guys, it's Eva from Fred Weezy Died Laughing and I'm here to do my weekly wrap up. So this week I got four books read and I'm going to start talking about the first one right now which is The Warlow Experiment by Alex Nathan. This is a book I received on request from um, Serpent's Tale. They were very kind to uh, give this to me when I sent them a cheeky email asking if I could get it. Um, and this one's really really interesting. This is set in the late 1700s, like 1793. We're following a man called Herbert Powis. Um, he is lives in Wales and um, he has decided that he wants to conduct something that will kind of keep his name alive, kind of impress his peers um, and he decides that he wants to see what seven years of solitude will do to basically a human mind um, and can someone survive properly being completely alone for seven years but have all their needs catered for them like without it being like a survival thing and um, like being trapped on a desert island or something like that um so he basically creates this like underground these these underground rooms and he sends out an ad um, and asks for someone who would like to have like their family taken care of for seven years um if they were to go and live underground in his rooms for seven years um in quite comfortable surroundings um his like books and his food will be given to him every day and you know Basically, the, the person only has to kind of like journal his experience and his thoughts and stuff. Um, and the only person to take up the offer is a man called uh, John Warlow. And he is a semi-literate um, kind of uh, farmer. It's from a neighbouring um, estate and um, he decides to take up on it. But it's very quickly, like as soon as this kind of book starts, we know even from the way John Warlow speaks, he is not an extremely, like he's not an educated man. Um, he doesn't really understand what it is that he is going to be doing he knows he's going to be alone but like I feel like he doesn't really get the ramifications of it um, and we start kind of seeing his descent into kind of like a madness and what this solitude does to him and then Powis ends up kind of um getting a like starting a relationship with John Warlow's wife because he is meeting her every week and giving her money for her keep and for her family um he learns that Powis or he learns that Warlow probably wasn't the nicest husband um and he starts kind of getting feelings uh, for John Warlow's wife which does kind of skew his thoughts about the experiment and about Warlow's eventual release as well and what's going to happen when that does does occur um so yeah we are following just a couple of very different characters um and this one was really really interesting it's not a long book it's only just under 300 pages I think in those 300 pages we did get a lot of kind of the unravelment of these characters which was really kind of addicting to read and was just so like I, I really wondered about this experiment I found it really really interesting especially because Paus himself is not a like sociable um character he is someone who prefers his solitude and um, doesn't see many people would prefer to be on his own the only people he really sees every day would be his servants and his like footman and stuff like that Um, he prefers to correspond with people through letters rather than actually see them so the fact that he is a solit solitary man and then he is putting that on onto someone else um, just for like the sake of an experiment and his whole thought process behind the experiment as well is so clinical almost because he really enjoys botany and he basically feels like he would be able to he'd be able to like observe this experiment as if you would be observing like a plant but obviously plants and humans are very different so that is going completely like not to plan and he's starting to realise that um, and you kind of do despise him a little bit for the lack of caring and just his whole attitude of his entitlement to ignorance definitely um, and this is a book that does make you feel a little bit icky because John Warlow like he he's one of the like he kind of feels like if you are dirty like from working outside you would wash he's not working outside so he feels like he's not dirty so he's like not washing himself and he's not really changing his clothes that much he's not cleaning up his surroundings so he's eventually like living in just like mounds of dirt and he's he's describing like he's just literally describing like the creepy crawlies that are like living on him eventually and it's just it's one of those ones that will real really kind of make you go oh like um and I do love sometimes when books do do that so um this one was a really interesting read for me I gave it a four out of five stars um and yeah definitely recommend it for someone who wants to pick up something really interesting to read because this is definitely unlike something I've read before and I should say as well this is actually inspired by a true advertisement of someone who did actually undertake this experiment the author was unable to find out exactly what happened in the end so this is kind of her imagining of what happened um so the fact that this is based on a true story is really really interesting next book I read was one that I hadn't planned to read um but for some reason I can't remember what it was but I started thinking about just um Terry Pratchett and Discworld and stuff and I realised I really 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 wanted to continue on with the Discworld um, series and read the next book I needed to read um, on that list and that was Weird Sisters um, which is part of the Witches um, 
section of it and um, so really like suited this time of year as well and um, which was really nice and yeah I just really really wanted to read some Terry Pratchett and this definitely gave me exactly what I wanted which was just comedic humour an amazing world and yeah just a really funny great story and um, so this one follows uh, Granny Weatherwax who is one of the witches they're following three of the witches as um, basically a king is killed um, and his I think it's his cousin or his nephew or something I think it's his cousin that like has killed him and basically takes the throne and um the witches help uh hide the king's trueborn son um away so he is basically safe and isn't killed by the family that who want to take over and then eventually the witches uh, come to be hated by this ruling family because witches are kind of a law unto themselves they don't follow the law they people are not scared of them but they respect them and they won't really like go against them and the people who are rulers now really hate that so they kind of end up coming under scrutiny a bit um, and that's as much as I can explain a Terry Pratchett plot because it does go if anyone has read Terry Pratchett before it does go completely all over the place um this one is really funny I love the character of Granny Weatherwax I think she's brilliant um she is just like you know she's right and everyone is wrong basically and if she's wrong it's not really her it's you know she just her whole opinions is just like are, are so good um and the other witches as well and their dynamic the three their the, their dy dynamic was just like was brilliantly done and I just love how Terry Pratchett writes them um basically nothing makes sense in this world ever and you just have to accept that nothing makes sense and these things like all sorts of things will happen and you just kind of have to go along with it and I think in this case I feel like um, the first couple of books that I read like The Colour of Magic um, and I can't remember the second book after that um, when you're kind of getting into the world it's very hard to understand the world and especially when you're used to kind of more linear plots I guess um, and plots that make a little bit more sense and have a little more rules to them where in this world there are no rules really especially when it comes to magic um, I do definitely love The Witches Over the Sorcerers this is definitely one of my favourites that I've read of the Discworld novels so far and I'm really looking forward to continuing on I definitely preferred the first half of this one to the second half and um, I think I kind of felt like my concentration I don't know whether it got lost a little bit in the second half or I was just I don't know I think I was just ready to move on to the next book by that stage but um I definitely preferred the first half I felt more engrossed in the first half than I did the second half and um, but I did overall really enjoy the story and I gave it a four out of five stars the next book I read was a neck alley book and that was The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil and um, this is a book set in kind of the Victorian time London 1800s and um, we were following a girl called Iris who was born and um, when she was born her collarbone broke and um, so she's kind of left with this kind of deformity on her collarbone um, and everything else like she's fine she can like do everything she just kind of walks with a little bit of a hunch because of and um, the deformity on her collarbone um, she's working in a kind of a doll making shop and um, with her sister and her sister had the pox so her sister is like scarred from the pox and is very bitter and angry about her life and what the pox has done to her and now that she has to hide away and kind of her prospects have really dimmed um, and she kind of seems to blame Iris and a lot of like why her life has turned out the way it has so Iris isn't living the life that she kind of wants to live she wants to be a painter she wants to do her art and she's stuck kind of just like painting dolls faces every day and um, and then we are also following this character called Silas who is kind of like a taxidermist um but he basically delights in things that are weird and gross and wonderful in their own way and um, he loves anything that's a little bit out of the ordinary anything that's a little bit ugly I guess um or like not ugly but like things that like other people might shy away from um kind of the, pe the peculiar would be the best word for that um and he's not a very nice character it's very obvious from the start that there's just something not right with him um and he sees iris one day and he ends up kind of getting this obsession with her and he like really wants her and he starts like following her and he has all like he kind of creates a relationship between the two of them in his head and it becomes really really sinister um, and Iris does eventually she ends up meeting a guy um, an, an artist who wants to, her to model for his painting and he te like agrees to teach her to paint so her life is kind of blooming um, but Silas is kind of like on the periphery and we know something bad is going to happen this one I I don't know I thought I was going to like it more than I did and um, I feel like the character Silas like from the start is just like really like I feel like nothing was surprising in this book like we knew exactly what all the characters were going to do and their intentions nothing was really hidden and um, especially with Silas kind of being like the villain of the story and we were getting his point of views a lot um, and 
nothing ever that he did ever surprised me because he kind of told he told the reader what he was going to do loads of times like before he did it and um, I think in this case it just it didn't it didn't really work that well I think that works with some novels in this case I'm not sure if it did I really did like Iris's kind of character development and how confident she became and um everything like that um but the way the way the writing in this book was done was written was really odd because everything in this book was kind of vulgar in just a really kind of horrible way like everything um from like just the way Silas described his work um to we are following another we have a point of view of like a street urchin kind of boy um and everything about him and his life was like really dirty and horrible and his sister was like a prostitute she was probably only 13 or 14 or something like that and she was a prostitute and he would describe her sometimes and everything was described like this really dark horrible way um and it did picture this like kind of grimy London like this it, it wasn't all bells and sparkles so there is this really, really there was a really really grimy part of it and um, but then even like there was a point where um Iris was talking about her and um her and her lover is like lovemaking and she described like his sperm drying on her belly and cracking like egg white and I was like that's a really that's a really weird description like I I was kind of like everything kind of turned into this really weird gross way I, I don't know like everything was turned and I, I feel like there is a skill in that I definitely can appreciate that there was a skill in the author doing that and um, but it wasn't something that I generally felt good about either um, and there are a lot of descriptions in this book about um what Silas works doing obviously like animal bodies and animal cruelty animal death and there are a couple of dog deaths in this that I really don't like didn't like um uh yeah and just the, the describing of that and the describing of like skins being pulled off bodies and meat and ugh, yeah wasn't really one that I really enjoyed um definitely not one for someone with a weak stomach because it, even for me I was a little bit it didn't it didn't do anything to, to my stomach it just made me feel a bit ugh, I just didn't I just didn't like it um but that was just me other people would be fine with that um so I gave this a three stars uh, overall and yeah definitely good for this time of year definitely a little bit unsettling a little bit creepy um so it was a good time of year to read it definitely not one for summer I would say it's a more autumn autumnal read um but yeah three out of five stars and then the last book I read was one of my very old neck alley books as you know I'm kind of trying to slowly get my way through the, the backlist um this was Healing Montana Sky by Deborah Holland and this one ended up being uh, a surprise for me because I did actually quite enjoy it um I don't know why but some of my older neck alley books are all these kind of like pioneer American like era um and I don't know why because I don't really read that but for some reason a few years ago I was like requesting all of these kind of books um so this is set in Montana and it is about a woman called Antonia her husband has been has been killed by a grizzly bear attack um, and she basically has to obviously she was living in the wilderness with her two sons and she has to pack up and move into town and try and figure out what the hell she's going to do with her life and how to survive with her two sons um, and we were following another man called Eric who's a farmer and his wife dies in childbirth um, so the two of them are in town trying to figure out Eric has brought his daughter his newborn daughter to the doctor to try and um, help save her because she was also born early she needs a wet nurse um, and Tonia her she is still breastfeeding her youngest son and um, so she ends up becoming the net the wet nurse but everyone is saying you know you're gonna have to move to Eric's farm and there could be gossip so the best thing to do would actually for the two of you to be married and just you know your whole your family can become one basically um, and the two of them are kind of like in desperate need so they both agree to getting married even though they they are strangers they hardly know each other um, and they end up getting married and they all move to Eric's farm and start like building life together and that is basically the whole plot of the story like there is no there's like a tiny ripple of like kind of um Native American attacks on like the horizon but like that never actually turns in this was just like a really really nice story it was like watching an episode of like the Waltons or something um where you know nothing bad is ever going to happen the, the worst that, that that could happen in this is like a rude character like a character saying a rude thing that's like the worst thing that seems to happen other than like the deaths and stuff which seems to be a theme with this series is that like a husband or a wife or someone dies and then like forced marriages and stuff like that or arranged marriages um seems to be a theme with this but with this series um but in this one yeah it was just like really really nice and I think I enjoyed it because a lot of the books I've been reading reading around this book were quite unsettling like the doll factory before it and then the book I'm reading as well at the moment is a little bit of a horror book so 
I, I think I actually just really enjoyed the niceness of this one. Um, I will say there was some what I would deem racist language used about Native Americans. The Native Americans are referred to Indians throughout the book rather than Native Americans. Um, the word redskin is used at one point to describe um, the Native Americans and the word squaw is used several times in this book um, and I think it was used, I'm actually not 100% sure if squaw is a derogatory term, um, I'm presuming it is but in the way it was used by the characters, by like these white characters in this book I would definitely say it was used in a derogatory way and um, so there was that in this book um so which which kind of I was a little bit like oh like I don't really think I don't really think there's no need for it basically um so yeah and that was the only really thing but um and because of that I kind of brought it down to 3.5 stars um overall rather than a four stars but yeah I just really enjoyed the niceness of this and the sameness and if you just want like a really nice story of two people kind of dealing with their grief together and eventually falling in love and just enjoying their farm life together this is a great pick um so yeah so that is everything I've read this week please let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you guys again next time bye